Hello and welcome to the Fall Artist Focus um, for the Fall 2022 uh, with Claudia Bucher. Um, I'm delighted to be here live in her studio today um, with, the, with the support of the city of Lucerne from Switzerland. And I first met uh, Claudia in 2016, interviewing her as part of a civic engagement project that I was doing for uh, Lucerne. And mm -hmm. through that process of being in this space and in the studio with your mm -hmm. materials and reading about the work, I um, really kind of, you know, delved deep into the materiality and the vi visceral nature of your, your public performance practice. And Claudia is an interdisciplinary artist. She works in installation, sculpture, printmaking, drawing, and all of these uh, disciplines really culminate in a public performance practice. Uh, where And she's been creating outdoor public performance art works for the last uh, 20 years uh, and was first introduced to the concept by uh, Rudi Schul, uh, who was um, a visiting professor at the Lucerne Art Academy uh, where she was studying a fine arts program. And prior to that, uh, she studied in London at the City Guild's um, school in London for two years uh, before going returning back to Lucerne and studying there. And you were also uh, one of the Swiss artists in the Chicago studio um, yes. in 2005. 2005. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you know we're re we're celebrating the anniversary of 20 years of this cultural exchange program. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, super special to be here with you today. And thank you for sharing your practice with us today. So thank nice. you for uh, coming here. <laughs> I'm really pleased to do this, this interview now. And uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's always such a treat uh, to be in Claudia's studio because it's really um, much a part of the process. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna jump in and share with you uh, one of her most recent public performance works. So uh, let's jump in with that. <laughs>
You can see a cutted video documentation of my most recent work called Zastei, means 10 stones in English. I showed this performance a month ago as part of the New Yorker performance series. About 10 performers performed after each other in a public park. It's an area where lots of migrants are living. The mixture of an art interested audience and the pedestrians who happened to be passing by served me and my work. As you can see, I slowly pull a collar back filled with 10 stones over the street. I collected the stones beforehand on the stone field behind. The heaviness of the weight to be dragged is physically amplified by my breathing rhythm. I put the stone collar on my belly and feel the heavy burden while I'm breathing. I was really touched that unexpectedly some young girls showed interest in my action. A group of girls who were celebrating their friend's birthday in the park passed and stopped to watch my performance. I thought that was wonderful since my work has to do with female images in different cultures. The question, how do I position myself in it, is really important, especially in a world where human rights are still not respected everywhere. It's even more necessary to open our eyes and react. I was affected that those girls found a connection to my performative language. They don't need to understand the work totally, but maybe something can trigger their own inner imagery, which hopefully can affect a critical thinking.
I'm going to heat the head back on the ground until it rips open and I have freed myself from its burden. Once I got rid of all the stones, I really felt relieved a lot. So after that, I'm uh, developing sculptural images which reminds on different images of women or people all over the world. So, you know, I'm really interested, uh, Claudia, with how, um, you know, there was these moments of surprise and these unexpected interactions with the public. And you described this group of teenage boys, you know, seeing you at the very start when you were, you know, mm -hmm. almost in that that process of stillness before the performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the importance of the, the intimacy of those unexpected encounters for the public and what that means to you, uh, you know, and how that informs how you choose sight? Uh, for me personal, I really love to start my performances a bit earlier and that can be just sitting at a place or sitting in front of my material or lying on the floor or standing but uh, to feel to feel myself in those moments and it's a transition from the the daily life I was before and getting into this body awareness and uh, first I have to calm myself calm myself down and then uh, here the situation was a bit different normally I have somebody next to me or some people who take care or look after me and I feel safe and 
here in this per performance festival, there were about 10 performers after each other, you know, on different places. And the schedule was really tight. Every half an hour, you moved from one place to the next. So I knew, okay, I, I will be there. I started about 15 minutes before because I just... I, I felt also this this challenge. I wanted to 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 observe the space before the people would arrive. I want to already be performing before my, the the in the performance and our interested audience arrived. <laughs> but because it's a public space, of course, uh, other people are are just passing. Lots of people they don't mention anything. They uh, sometimes you can. When I see some documentations later of the video, sometimes it's really interesting. Sometimes they don't even turn their head, you know, they don't want to be, uh, they don't even want to Acknowledge. act that they've acknowledged it. And those teenager boys, it was first, of course, they asked me, hey, are you okay? Are you crazy? Why are you lying on the floor? And uh, and I explained that it would be, uh, I'm, I'm participating in a performance, in a performance festival. I'm an artist. Ah, that's art. Okay. So how long are you lying on the floor? And I said, <laughs> yeah, my performance will take about half an hour. And then they left again and I came back and they asked, how old are you? And then I said, okay, 51. And they were screaming and running away again so for me it was kind of interesting what and i question myself what what uh, is going on in their brain you know they cannot see a face of a figure i was obvious a figure uh but the rest was hidden you know mm. and once my performance started i could hear their voices again because they some of friends of, of their friends must have come to and before I moved, um, I could hear the voice that somebody explained the other a guy saying, hey, what? Because they were playing there. Uh, what is she doing? And the other guy said, like, that's an artist. She's doing it. That's art. Ah, OK. And then there was a repetition of what I told them. And, uh, and uh, OK. And then the, one of the guys said, what? Half an hour, she's just lying here doing nothing. So, but I'm, in this moment, I started, and then the friend of his just answered, "Yeah, I mean, if I would get hundred thousand bucks for it, uh, I would do that too." So, <laughs> that's but it was interesting. So... <laughs> you know, the I was watching and observing what the girls, the group of girls that came across the performance yes. by accident. And there was one of the girls um, who was really being very attentive, watching you as you, uh, as the stones, as you were carrying the weight of stones. And she was mimicking the, she could feel it in her body. And there was a, this uh, transmission between, from your body to her body. You know, and I think about, you know, it, the impact of the unexpected and, you know, well, I just think that that can be more impactful where that intimate exchange when it is unexpected. So the cultural going audience who is moving around the park and going to these performances, they know what they know that they're going to see art. They know, but when you come across something and it's completely unexpected, it's by surprise. You know, was it? I'm wondering. You know, I know for myself when I've experienced that, it's a bigger surprise. Mm -hmm. But there's something about that embodied exchange that happens. The intimacy you know, between an experience of physical exchange that, um, can you talk more about the importance of that for you and and how that manifests itself in your work? I think what you're uh, uh, describing about this intimacy, this in, intimacy, 
Because I want you oh, to get sorry. intimate as well, okay. you know. <laughs> I'm a bit closer to uh, I think that's a part which cannot be controlled and not be really planned beforehand a mm. performance. And I mean, I can prepare myself, my body, I can have a concept, but I don't really know what's between the audience and me. And there is this concentration I can feel. And this concentration or this energy pushes me also to go in a direction with my material or to go slower or to push it. And I think that's, uh, I don't think, I, uh, I'm not a monologue when I'm performing, you know. I, uh, in the best case, it's really a dialogue between the audience and me and the surroundings too. They are also other impacts like a noise like a bird uh, and uh, or the material who behaves different I, as i was planning and things like this but i think through those unexpected moments uh, it helps me to get into more my work and probably then this part happens that it uh, it has a chance to be to talk more about these intimacy moments, you know. Mm. Uh, and, you know, this idea, you know, I think there's a wonderful um, quote from a recent interview that you did with um, Ollie and Halsing and Maximilian Ledke. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But you say that I enter into a dialogue with the material. I change the material and it changes me. So, you know, this interrelational aspect. And I, I think this, this kind of, you know, this sense of the unpredictable and these unexpected encounters that kind of, you know, that build another conversation Mm -hmm. in different in different mm -hmm. ways intuitive mm -hmm. ways mm -hmm. in material forms you know mm -hmm. these connections that you create with nature mm -hmm. in the process of of making the performance or in dialogue mm -hmm. um can you can you give us you know we we shared a little bit about your your like the installation that's in your studio. Can you share a bit about the process of how you go about making work and how you in enter into the unknown? Because I think, you know, some artists like just come out, come up with an idea and then they go make it. But you, you really kind of, you know, there's an intuitive process that is really deeply researched, but then it kind of evolves even further in the actual production of the performance. Can you talk about that? I mean, what that means. There are different you. sources, you know. Uh, one is for sure the daily life, it means like. Um, when I work in the garden, when I do gardening, sometimes I'm just so fascinated what happens with the earth on my skin, for example. Or in my early work, I uh, used to work with berry juice. And I remember the picture of my grandmother sitting outside of our old house, doing tons, cooking tons of berries from the garden. And uh, the berry juice was running down her arms and I was so fascinated as a child because she looked like a butcher wife, you know, a butcher. Uh, but 
she was making something so sweet and I could and I loved the jelly she used to make but the action of it looked really cruel and and really bloody you know because of this red of the jelly and I've been always fascinated how uh, close those two really opposites come or apart and come, or you always come uh, when you make when you make it round, you come back, you know. Uh, and uh, to to question what you see might not really be. The thing you see, you know, mm. the red of the berry juice might not be the blood, even it looks so bloody on some pictures, but the smell tells me it's something else. So to and uh, I think maybe that's also part with this live uh, actions, live performance. They are, of course, the concentration of the audience. I can feel there is the smell what's happening in the surrounding and with this stone performance I could also smell when the I had to work so hard to get rid of the stones and they were just uh, uh, f uh, ripping on the asphalt on other stones so I felt like why it was such a fire smell you know it was like making a fire mm. oh wow so that's and that, that, that was also an unexpected uh, part of it. Mm. That's uh, those besides situations or elements I start to enjoy and start to take this knowing about one experience. I often start, uh, take it and sometimes it comes up in a more uh, planned way for a next performance. And I, so, I think... Um... You know, this aspect of uh, circles is also something that you um, developed in a performance um, in memory of Rudy Shu, yes. yes. uh, who was your, your mentor yes. um, and had a long collaborative practice uh, with Gund Monika Günther, Monika yes. Günther yes. Um, from Lausanne. Yeah. So let's uh, share... Um, a short video of uh, photographs from this uh, piece. Mm -hmm. So maybe I have to say first before you start. Is that good? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Rudy Schill, actually, uh, thank to him, I think I, I do performance art because... When I was in art school, I had I was really focusing on doing sculpture, and in these sculptures, I started to use my body more and more. But I didn't really that was not the the work. But then after a talk, after a presentation, when I did a, a huge sculpture in the in the crafts room with uh, this ye yellow bandage, I was drawing over the room, and I was more um, making a a drawing in the room with those lines. And while I was talking about what I did, I realized, hmm, uh, actually, <laughs> I talked so much how I did it. And I felt like the process was the thing which really interests me. And I declare that as the work, or I should also think of making that the work and not just the end part, you know? And uh, then I uh, had this workshop with Rudy Schill and a new world opened up to me because before I was uh, going from one medium to the next, I wanted to explore lots of different stuff. And in performance art, just everything was combined. Mm. It was about my body movement, about the sound, about the imagery, about sculpture, and it gave me such a free freedom mm. in my work too. And at the same time, it showed me uh, in which direction I can carry on. And back to this now, yeah. uh, Rudy Schill died uh, 
two years ago and he was running the gallery Apropo. He actually uh, used his garage 50 years ago already to show exhibitions and uh, brought lots of important artists also to Lucerne in this little space. And for me, it was always a pleasure to see the really interesting art mm. there. And uh, he died two years ago and his uh, art and life partner, Monica Günther, is, is still running this space. And a year ago, she did this exhibition for Ruedi in uh, memory of him, you know, mm. and uh, lots of performers were invited to do something. And that's a performance you see here in, uh, in memory of Ruedi, yes. on a wall and had these uh, uh, roses in my hand and I always uh, took two rose heads and uh, was drawing circles on the floor and I came from uh, far and I moved myself towards the gallery. Here, uh, the box you see uh, is from Monica and the stamp is from Rudy. And I was uh, first, before I was breathing into the water, actually using the stamp and put the stamp all over my face and make it rolling on my uh, face. And uh, okay. oh. And on the stamp, it's, uh, you see it here. There is another one, it's a pair Rudy Schill made. It's uh, called Zweifellos, question mark, by Rudy Schill. That means doubtless, question mark. 
And he has a second stamp like this with an explanation point. So, and I really liked to use this tool in this situation when, uh, uh, yes, uh, we don't really know what's happening after life. And uh, yes, yeah, but we still believe, or I still believe somewhere around he is with us. So, yes. I'm a great <laughs> believer in the dead are with us. <laughs> uh, then I uh, put my head in a basket of uh, water and I was breathing and I was breathing out. And uh, this element often, I use this element often in my performances because it even pushes me more uh, to to come and get in touch with my inner space. This image of the, the circle and so and these integrated elements of, you know, there's almost like um, an uncomfortability. You know, you go to these, you know, deeply, you know, unconventional places, yes. maybe, you know, we, or these places of uncomfortability, uncom you know, mm -hmm. the you talked about your grandmother staining mm -hmm. our hands mm -hmm. in the berry juice mm -hmm. and how women, you know, in our cycles, in mm -hmm. our monthly cycles, you know, we have to deal with blood and staining, you know, mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. body. And these visceral, you know, this sense of visceralness, body fluids, the body physically responding to materials and you know you're taking we we've you know we're constantly kind of trying to cleanse mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. society of of difference you know mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. and I think you know that's the beauty and that's why I love art and culture it's because it's it's embracing everything. Mm -hmm. It's embracing mm -hmm. diversity. It's mm -hmm. it's and there's a deep sense of the real, the visceral, the physical, and the um, these feminine elements, you know, that are so much a part of our body mm -hmm. that we try to, you know, push, you know, society wants to keep secret or push away into the corners. Mm -hmm. How are, you know, how is your your femininity or or the divine feminine, I think rather, let's use those terms, um, you know, a celebrated aspect in your work and an affirmative part of maybe affirmative choices. I think when I'm performing, I cannot deny my body. My body is part of the performance itself. And I'm, I'm in the body I have. So, and so I cannot just exclude this part when I'm performing. It's automatically, it's, it will be always a part in it, you know. Mm. And... Uh, or how I feel in my body. But at the other side, I'm also questioning, I mean, uh, which, is, which is me in my body or what are all the given models and uh, rules how femininity or a woman has to be seen from the society. So, mm -hmm. and I think... 
uh, it's important to open up that too. Mm -hmm. You know that sure we are bleeding every month, and but I think through that uh, we are uh, giving birth. Uh, but through that, there are so manifest, so many manifested image culturally and religiously based image which are just given and uh, I'm questioning myself yeah just because of that does it really has to be uh, to is this image which was given to me really the way I feel too yeah. so yeah. is it really congruent and uh, I have a daughter in the teenager age so I think uh, my role as a mother becomes an issue in my work too, because I feel myself how long it's taking for me to uh, question some given tradition and really sort out what do I really want to take and what do I want to leave go and uh, what is more based in a patriarch patriarchism cool. so yes. uh, and how can we carry on and how can I raise a daughter uh, which who I hope is strong en enough to really uh, have an opinion in this world and be outspoken and is able to live the life she wants yeah. and that's that now uh, brings me not just to my daughter I mean me as a mother, I'm, I'm probably standing for lots of women out there, or also for non-mothers. I think that's general. How do we deal with the next generation? And uh, where do we have to really be a clear uh, breakthrough and stop some stuff that some power structures, power structures cannot happen anymore? Mm. So really so, kind of questioning um so you know i think uh you've you've talked to me about the importance of you know there's the personal aspect in the work there's the political aspect and then there's also the universal mm -hmm. and you know and then that goes back to the personal as well yes. <laughs> so it's yes. all the you know and kind of questioning these um but, you know, questioning how we are all deeply socialized in these conventions. Yes. And, you know, do you think, you know, you're going through the performative actions, you're unpacking that within yourself, you're, you're creating a kind of moment of liberation for yourself, but then also possibly for the public when they unexpectedly come across the work hopefully <laughs> but of course yes i mean i have i feel like i have to start with myself you know mm -hmm. and to take the lay layers away and away and i hope i can share that with the audience mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a first first i have to, I have to start with with, with me mm -hmm. and not follow to a path uh, I mean, uh, it's interesting when you think of a path which is given when the water finds in it, it doesn't get out anymore. And it's always uh, a bit harder and it needs a bit more work to get out. It's sometimes uh, easier just to follow the path, you know, yeah, the given path. So, um, but it's so important to always stop and maybe build a, a stau. Uh, you know, uh, the stop the barrier. water, a barrier that it can go different ways again. Mm. And then it comes together. Uh, so, yeah. but what you said about the there are these different um, uh, sources for my work, and I think all at the end all ends up with me and how I see how I see it and how do I want to uh, what carry on with it and what do I want to, to tell uh, outside of myself what do I want to give forward mm. of course yeah I, I think that is you know 
I think, you know, in that metaphor that you just shared, you know, this idea of not always choosing, you know, it's more difficult to choose the difficult process where you actually dive deeper, but that is always an internal process yes. to work through. Yes. And um, I know that we're um, drastically running out of time, and there's one more um, video that we wanted to share with you all that is uh, five minutes. So maybe, um, and I think this piece really kind of speaks to this idea of the flowering and the blossoming, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the imagery you're using in it. And then we'll, uh, I think if we jump to questions, with our, um, this is a recording in the studio today that we're going to uh, broadcast on Saturday. Uh, but we do have um, a few divine people uh, who kindly joined us in the room today. So if you have questions for Claudia, please just type them in the chat um, on your screens and we will come to them after this next video. So thank you for joining us.
this this circular aspect of the political situation, uh, religiously, you know, what were the images that came out of this performance for you, or what what did this performance reflect for you in the aftermath? Because I've I've read that you always title your performances after the fact, you know. And so, you know, in terms of the internal, the personal, you know, the political and the religious or the universal meaning, you know, what were the images that came out of this piece for you that you'd want to let me feel? You mean the one uh, yes. Yeah. This one in Cuba. Yes. Do you want to also tell us uh, what the title is? Uh, and where it was? The title is just Tierra, means earth or soil, soil, earth. And uh, I did it with uh, Earth from Cuba. And uh, I think I went through lots of imagery which are based and situated in a, also in a uh, culturally or literally religiously uh, context and uh, I think uh, especially when uh, the cloth came over me but for me it's important to to really just uh, come from one image to the next in a in a and I don't want to stay too long on one because I feel like uh, there are so many different layers and I come from my sense, my own uh, upbringing from a Catholic education, and I think Switzerland is, uh, I mean, yes, our, uh, the culture when I was growing up was very uh, Catholic, let's say. Um, and, uh, but for me, it's important to open that up, you know, mm -hmm. to bring all other ideas in it and also to think about them for myself and how I deal with that. Yeah, I mean there were lots of uh, religious iconography of Mary, yeah. you know, within that performance yes. Yes. and um, that's actually something that my father did a lot of research and would speak about because he was a mm -hmm. theologian mm -hmm. you know and how the the image of Mary needs to be opened up and questioned and <laughs> celebrated more than what we I actually think, do so it's, it's and I think he grew up with this this image of this Mary which is so perfect you can never reach that and but we always have this standard somewhere you know mm -hmm. and I think it's really important to show all the other sides. Yeah, yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, let that be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So, and the, yeah. the sheets that came out of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you to our uh, audience. I think there's a, a couple of questions um, in the chat for us live. And in the broadcast, we'll be asking uh, you, the audience, to pop your questions in the chat and we will mail the, email those or answer them uh, directly if, if the Wi-Fi is accommodating. <laughs> so uh, there's lots of different opportunities to answer your questions on Saturday. Uh, but the first question we have today uh, is from Rennie MG and she says, so many intriguing images from the Maria at St. Elizabeth with the roses and Earth Mo Mother and the tearing of the cloth and the extricating from the constraints while creating partial freedom. The religious image is a mode in the process of escaping. Yeah, and that's, um, thank you for sharing that, Rennie. I think, you know, this mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. of the, the actual action being an act of liberation mm -hmm. is something that we mm -hmm. very much spoke about in flow mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. and okay. you know it's mm -hmm. part of you know what you're exploring mm -hmm. um and a question from Ika I think dear dear Claudia 
your your actions are very intriguing. I love your transformations. I see a strong focus on the body part head. I was thinking of the body part head maybe being seen as a rational part of the body. But to me, your work is also devotionally devotional and sacramental. What I've seen in your works, there is an interesting material choice. They seem also to be natural materials. I don't have a real question, but if there is time left, could you say something about the head and the choice of materials? So yes, why focus on this um, aspect of the rational when you know you're so much an embodied practitioner? I don't think that's always been the case, has no, it? it has um, not. That's just a recent, um, just in these two few recent pieces we've shared today. Yes, and I think it's also an expression of you know right now what's uh, happening. I mean, what's happening in uh, in yes, in the Euro Europe war in Ukraine or uh, in Iran or um, in Afghanistan? I feel, I feel, I'm so uh, hopeless and sad and. Uh, I can come at the border that I don't know how to how to deal with those uh, political situations and where where is my strength and how can I how, how can I uh, say something and I think my body is sometimes so frozen I guess maybe that's an explanation that that I feel like everything comes up to my head, uh, but uh, I think especially the stone performance. I I had this image last May. Often I I, I create those images uh, under the shower or when I'm walking, and they suddenly pop up, and I felt like I, I've just seen this this figure with this heavy head. And, and then when I start to work with the material, uh, it suddenly uh, develops, my per performance imagery develops and I, I see what I have to get rid of it again and what I can, can uh, what I uh, bring back, what I already have in my performative work. Mm. Uh, but right now this head kind of is not just staying in the head because it becomes an extension of my, actually it's the extension of my body. Mm. And the, the feeling of being powerless. So, yeah. yeah. And I think this is also an important part of, you know, it is, you know, these interconnections, these dialogues with the natural material. And also, you know, you know, embracing the vulnerable, yeah. you know, embracing yeah. the fragile, yes. but as, as a part of the process. And um, so I am, you know, it's whiz by uh, today, mm -hmm. but this is the first artist focus of um, an eight week series that we put together as part of the Out of Sight Collective. And next week, I will be in conversation with another Swiss artist, Dominic Lipp, who I was introduced to uh, by Claudia uh, many years ago. And, um, and then the week after that, Ika Trinks is going to be in conversation with AJ, um, with AJ, with B. AJ Shamar uh, from India. And then Bo Coleman is going to be in conversation with John G. Bolme. And we encourage you to check out the full program. Uh, we have artists from Tel Aviv, from Japan, Toronto, um, and India, and a real, and Canada, 
and you know we're starting off this uh, fall in Switzerland so we're really traveling around the world to different artists practice this fall so I do hope you can join us every Saturday at 11 15 a.m Chicago time and um and 6 15 1815 hours uh, European time and so so thank you all again and thank you Claudia Thanks for being here today and sharing your work and sharing your uh, thoughts and ideas I think you know I'm just I'm always inspired and deeply moved by experiencing your performance so thank you for bringing this Thanks extraordinary <laughs> creativity into the world and yes. inspiring us so thank you thank Thanks you. a lot it was a pleasure for me thanks uh. <laughs>